Hi there, it's Heath Buckmaster, and today we're going to take a look at the Windows 7 Ultimate Control Panel. First, we'll start with system and security. This is where you're going to be looking at your computer's status. We're going to start by looking at the Action Center first. The Action Center allows you to manage the various security options on your computer by turning on or off the firewall, Windows Update options, whether you want it to monitor virus protection from a third-party system. You can also manage spyware, Windows Defender on and off, internet security settings, and of course your user account control. You'll also be able to manage network access protection from this menu too. Within the maintenance screen, you can check for solutions to problems that have been reported and see if there are any new solutions that you can download and install. You've also got the ability to back up your computer and restore it, check for Windows updates, or do regular troubleshooting and system maintenance functions within this screen. One of the big changes in Windows 7 is the ability to turn messaging on or off for things like Windows Update, your firewall, virus protection, etc. This allows you to minimize the number of pop-up messages that you receive on a regular basis. But even further, you can manage notification of when changes are made to your computer. You can decide that you only want to receive messages when you make changes to your Windows setup. You can also determine that you want to receive notifications when you make changes to Windows and programs with pop-ups as well as screen dimming. My recommendation is to use the default setting unless you'd prefer your screen not to be dimmed and just take it down a notch from there. Next up, let's go back to the control panel and take a look at what else is in system and security. We have the Windows firewall. You can manage which programs can move in and out of the firewall. You can also go into system to view your RAM and processor speed. The device manager is also in this section. You can also change the name of the computer. In Windows Update, you can turn automatic updating on or off, same as in Windows Vista. Power options, allowing you to set what the power buttons do, when the computer goes to sleep, and hibernation options as well. Backup and Restore allows you to back up and restore your computer settings. BitLocker Drive Encryption allows you to encrypt the data on your disk if you prefer that level of security. Administrative tools is where I spend most of my time. This is where you'll find defragmenting your hard drive, managing your hard drive partitions, scheduling tasks, as well as services. Now you may have additional options within your control panel depending upon your setup. I have the NVIDIA control panel because that's the type of video that I have on the system. Let's move into the network and internet settings. The network and sharing center is very similar to what you saw in Vista. This will allow you to see what kind of network you're on, a full network map, manage your network, as well as your local area and wireless connections. You can also set up a new connection or network, connect to a new network, and configure your home group and sharing options or do network troubleshooting. One of the new options in Windows 7 is home group. If you've got multiple computers on your network running Windows 7, you can create a home group, which allows easier sharing of media between all computers in your network. Remember, you can only do this if you have multiple computers that are running Windows 7. And finally, internet options. You can change your home page, delete your browsing history and cookies, and basic internet options for connectivity. Next, we move into hardware and sound. This is where your device manager is. You can add devices, add printers, manage your mouse, and do general device management. Autoplay configures your ability to play CDs or other media automatically when you plug them into your system. Think of this as plug and play. Sound, you can adjust the volume, change your system sounds, or manage your audio devices, and that includes playback as well as recording devices. In power options, you can change your power saver settings, move between balanced and performance modes, change what the computer does when it goes to sleep, and modify the power plan. This is especially useful on a laptop or mobile device. In the display settings, you can connect to external displays, change your screen resolution, uh, manage how the monitor flicker and refresh rate is configured. And again, you'll also see my NVIDIA control panel in there, which you may or may not have. Moving to the Programs tab, you can uninstall programs from here, turn Windows features on and off, 
You can also set the default programs that will launch, such as the default web browser, default media player that pops up when you double click on a file of that nature. This is not anything new, this was in Vista as well. You can also play around with installing your desktop gadgets here. Add them to your desktop, get more of them online, uninstall the gadgets. You'll also notice the 32-bit control panel for Java in here as well. Next, we move on to user accounts and family safety. You'll find the ability to change your account picture, add and remove user accounts, change your Windows password in the user accounts section. If you'd like to set up parental controls for any user, you can do that from here as well if you have children and you want to prevent them from seeing certain places. Windows Card Space allows you to save your information cards for online services. Credential Manager, that's also similar to Windows Vista, that's available here. And another 32-bit control panel applet for managing the mail setup for Outlook if you have that installed. Moving on to appearance and personalization. This is where you may see some changes in the system. If you go into the personalization options to change your theme, you'll notice that it's laid out a little bit differently here. You can set your desktop background. It will also change the Windows color, sound setup, and screensaver all at once in a compact theme. You can also customize each individual component if you prefer not to have the items that come with the theme itself. Once again, you'll notice a display icon. Again, you can change your screen resolution, connect to external displays, and do other display management. Again, you also see your desktop gadgets shows up in this section as well. You can also manage your tool bar, task bar, and start menu from this section. Ease of access is repeated here as well, managing your screen reader, turning on easy access keys, etc. You'll also be able to set your folder options from here for single and double click behavior, as well as showing hidden files and folders and other general folder management. You'll also be able to manage your fonts, add new fonts, delete fonts, or adjust the clear type text for your LCD. And once again, another repeated control panel is my NVIDIA control panel. Next in clock language and region, we can set the date and time, change our time zone. We can add new clocks for different time zones if you need that function, or add a clock gadget to your desktop if you use desktop gadgets. You'll also be able to change your region and language. You can install or uninstall multiple languages, change the display language and your location. Once again, you can change the format of date, time, and number, and you can change your keyboard input as well. You'll also notice that Ease of Access is repeated again here with its own section. Let Windows suggest settings or you can optimize your visual display, change how the mouse works, change the keyboard shortcuts as well for Ease of Access. And of course you'll also find speech recognition and the ability to set up your microphone. And that's the Windows 7 control panel. Lots of new features as well as some very familiar features that you'll remember from previous versions. Have a great day everybody!